gone. God bless y'all. Midnight cry. Y'all come on in. Share your message as you come in. Amen. God bless you. So by sharing. God bless you, chosen lady of God. Good to see you all. Sister Lily, God bless you. Hello, hope all is well. Blessings to you. Really, really good to see y'all on tonight. I have an awesome word for you. A teaching that I have uh, that I have to do this tonight. I have several to do, but this this teacher right here is really going to help many of you, I believe, especially in the season that you're in. I won't be moved. I will not be moved in this season. You won't be moved. Uh, despite of what you go through, continue to walk by faith and not by sight. Do you understand? And in an hour like this where you got people giving up, you got people buckling, throwing in the towel, saying they don't want ministry no more, they don't want God no more. You got people that's in and out, you know, people that's up and down. Got a bipolar spirit, this this um, this seesaw attitude. One minute you in, one minute you out. You see it right now. One one day it seems like people love you, then the next day it seems like they hate you. Uh, people don't show love. One day they showing love, and then one day they out. They they mean. They nasty. You know what I mean. You see a lot of these people. They they in and out. I see that a lot around me. And this is why I tell God, God, I don't want to be moved. God, uh, God spoke to me uh, not too long ago. Well, He told me to stay right there. Stay right where you at. And what God was saying is, stay in position. Um. We got a lot of things that's moving us out of position. Uh, also, I thank God for changing my character. Um, one of the greatest miracles is for you to have a character change. You don't flip out on people. You don't flash out on people no more. You don't snap out. See, when you learn to imitate him, when you learn to imitate Jesus... One thing about it, you'll you'll learn to you'll learn to stay gentle. You'll learn to stay sweet, compassionate. Uh, you won't be snapping out on your boss because of disagreements. One thing about it, when God come in and and He comes in and change you, everything about you, your nature, your character, that's one of the greatest miracles that you could ever see. See, when I look in a mirror, the mirror. I see one of the greatest miracles. Can't nobody ever tell me that I've never seen one because I can look in a mirror and see myself and see that I'm a miracle. Like I, I just certain things like situations like out in this world, when I be at work or wherever I'm at, I, I see people that was how I used to be. I see how pe I see when every time I look at, at, at a, at a young man that's coming up, that's growing up and, Living that fast life, that fast lane. See, I look at where I used to be, so I don't immediately cast them out. But see, I try to use wisdom to impart in, into them and let them know, listen, the way you're going, you can't go that way. And I'll explain why. I, I'll share wisdom. I'll encourage them to, you know, keep it moving. Keep the right attitude because my attitude was messed up. My character was messed up. I was mean. I was nasty. I was cursing everybody out. But see, I knew I couldn't I couldn't get nowhere like that, being like that. So it took Jesus to come in and change me. It took Jesus to come in and change my mindset, the way I thought, the way I looked at things. My whole outlook on life was is different than what it is now. One thing about it, when the Spirit comes in, when Jesus comes in, he'll take the blinders off so you're no longer going to see things like you used to see it. I saw things really messed up because that was my perception. Uh, I had scales over my eyes. And so when I got in Jesus, he started showing me the fruits of the spirit. He said, imitate me. My spirit is low. I'm meek. I'm humble. I'm gentle. So I started imitating him. So it wasn't easy for me to fly off the handle and snap on people, curse people out, walk off jobs because I didn't like it. I was mad and couldn't take pressure. 
I remember there was a time where I couldn't take nothing. I was walking off my jobs. I was quitting jobs, good jobs that God blessed me with. But I walk off my job, curse people out, had the wrong attitude, had the wrong outlook. I thank God for coming in and changing my character. And see, that's one of the greatest miracles is a character change. And man, I know this is not in vain. Everything I say, especially on a midnight cry, because I don't ever know what I'm going to say. I just have to flow based off what God gives me. Because many of y'all, when I come on and I teach something and I minister stuff, this is revelation and stuff that I've gotten throughout the day, throughout my night, maybe at work, that I want to share with you before I jump into the Word because many of us are being moved. Um, I did this title about I Won't Be Moved, and I want you to declare this over yourself, that I won't be moved despite of any trial, every tribulation, the hell of my home, the hell of my job. I will not be moved. I won't be moved in this season. In 2008, I let everything move me. In 2008, I let everything offend me. Say to yourself that I will not allow the things in 2008 that happened to let me be moved in 2009. I won't allow the afflictions to let me be moved. I won't allow, uh, allow the things in the natural, the trial, the tribulations. I will not allow this stuff to move me in this year right here. Many of us are going to 2019 with a made up mind, a fixed up heart. Yes, it's going to be a year of tribulations, but we're going to see breakthroughs in the natural and the spiritual. Do you understand? Yes, Sister uh, Mary, declare it over yourself that I will not be moved. I won't be moved. I don't know about you, but I won't be moved. I won't be moved out of position. And, and what I also know is people come in God and they think it's just going to be an easy walk to get, get, to get to that anointing. It's not going to be easy. There's going to be trials. There's going to be tribulations, a lot of error. It's going to be a lot of warfare to get to where you need to go. It's going to be a lot of warfare to get to the next level. So I hear when people prophesy, oh, it's your next level. It's your next level. Do you understand that you're not going to get to your next level without warfare? You're not going to get to your next level without opposition. It's not going to come easy. So they make it sound like it's going to come easy, how they prophesy how it's going to be a turnaround and how God going to uh, elevate you. He's going to move you to the next level. But you have also have to understand there's going to be warfare. It's going to be trials and tribulation. It's going to be stuff that's going to knock you off your uh, out of your position. That's if you're not rooted in God. This is why I say we get to a place that say, I won't be moved. I will not be moved. I'm getting ready to stay anchored in God. I'm getting ready to stay anchored in his word. I'm getting ready to go to the next level. But I also know it's not going to come with our opposition. You know what's wrong with many of us? Why we being moved? Because we're not conditioned for the position. You're in a position that you're not conditioned to be at. So you're in ministry, but are you conditioned for the position? See, you want the elevation, but are you conditioned for the elevation? You have to be conditioned for the position. That's why God got to whoop you into a place. First natural, then spiritual. When you go to the gym, you work out. You do squats and uh, you do bench presses. You get yourself in shape. You're getting yourself conditioned. When we were in school, when I was in football, when I played uh, different sports, they would have us doing running. They would call it conditioning. So it's first natural, then spiritual. So God has to put you in a place where he conditions you to see if you qualify for the position. So you have to be conditioned for the position. So you're in ministry, you operate and you prophesy, but see, God going to try you first. He going to try you to see if you want ministry. Can you take that next anointing? Can you take the next level in your in your ministry? Can you take the next level in your uh, your business, your uh, position, wherever you are in the church, whatever it may be? God wants to make sure you're conditioned for the position. Y'all say amen on tonight. And see, what many of us I know, we're in position, but we haven't been conditioned. So many of us think we're just getting ready to walk into the kingdom of God and just walk into the blessings of God without no without no trials, without no tribulations. You think you're just going to be able to enter in into the, the spiritual things and enter in to your next dimension, your next realm without there being opposition? 
And like I say, I understand to go to the next level, I have to be conditioned. Many of you going to have to be conditioned. And many of us have been moved from small stuff. We letting these little small foxes move us out of position. That's why many of us can't take anything. We can't take trials, persecution, and make it so bad. Many of us running from trials. We running from church to church. Trying to run from trial, trying to run from people. Not knowing your trial going to follow you. You can't run from a trial. You know what's going to happen if you, if you can't pass second grade, you ain't going to the third grade. You ain't passing third grade, you ain't going to fourth grade. So you have to be conditioned for the position. Sometimes God has to whoop us into position. But see, many of us, when, when trials and opposition comes, it seems like to me is what we do is a lot of us, we break. We break in the struggle. We don't know how to magnify God in the midst of what we're going through. Many of y'all, you magnify the situation more than you magnify God. And then you wonder why you're not seeing a turnaround. You wonder why you're not seeing a manifestation. And see, what I know is I'm not talking directly to you. But if this word hits you, I'm not flowing off anything you said. I'm not flowing off nothing you said. I'm flowing for me and ain't got nothing to do with no comments. I don't even pay attention to y'all like that. I be flowing. So like I say, if the word hits you, and if you get offended, maybe that's good. Maybe it's good that it hits your flesh. As a matter of fact, that's what I wanted to do. Because see, many of us, we self-righteous. We got a lot of pride. And like I said, many of us, we, we been moved from small stuff. Like little small foxes buckling over telephone disconnections. And you know what I mean? Just all this little petty stuff. That's not even detrimental. Can't take people talking about you. Can't take people lying on you. Can't take the preacher throwing off on you. So not knowing, see, it's God that's whooping us into position. It's God chasing us. A lot of us are being whooped into a place. So you say, I don't wonder, I don't know what's going on. I don't wonder why I'm I don't know why I'm going through so many trials. Stop lying. You know why God got you going through. Why he got you going through that. But see, we telling people why we that we at the same level in God, but be real and tell the people why you ain't going to the next level. Be real and tell them what's going on in your life, how you still got adultery, how you still can't pay your tithes, how you still stealing, you still lying and cheating, you still, you still undercover with all this little stuff you do, got triple lives and double lives. Tell these people why you ain't going to the next level. Tell them why you ain't touch, tapping that place in God, why you don't have a voice to God. See, many of us, we know why we ain't, we know why we're not where we need to be. But see, we blame it on the preacher. We blame it on the usher, the mean usher. We blame it on it. We blame it on everybody else. But see, we ain't looking at ourselves. But then we wonder why we're not touching that next place and God, that next dimension. Oh, they prophesied. That you're getting ready to get elevation. It's getting ready to be increased. They're giving you that for your flesh. Because see, they know that's going to encourage you for a little while. But right after that, you go back into your little shell. You go back to your mediocre anointing. You're going back to still being broke. Still don't have a prayer life. But they told you, you're going to your next level. And then you say, well, I don't know why I'm not growing in God. I don't know why I'm not touching this next dimension. Why everybody else is hearing from God and they're not hearing from God. You know why? Because you're being moved. You're not staying in position. So many of us don't understand when God chastens us. He says, I chasten those who I love now. So we say, I don't know why I'm, why I'm going through this. Why? See, maybe it's the seeds that you've sown. Many of us got by, but we didn't get away. We didn't get by. We didn't get away with the seeds that we sown. So now the harvest is up. See, now we see the harvest out of all this stuff that we sow, out of all this evilness that we sow. So now we're seeing this stuff come back to haunt us. We said some of y'all, your own speech is betraying you because you didn't talk yourself out of blessings. 
You done spoke curses over your own life. That I'm never going to go forward. No, you're not going to go forward now because you just spoke it. And e an evil angel grabbed that word and ran with it. I'm never going to get caught up on my bills. You ain't now because you just spoke it. I'm going to stay at this same job forever. Still at the bottom of the totem pole. That's where you'll be. I had this message tonight about I won't be moved. Many of you have to begin to decree and declare this over yourself that I won't be moved, especially in this year. And I had a scripture that I want to come up and show y'all. Out of Hebrews 6, verse 18. Hebrews 6 and verse 18. He says, now God did this so that by two unchangeable things to which it is an impossible for God to lie. So we know God's not going to lie. It's impossible for God to lie. He says, we who have fled to hold of the hope set before us may, may be greatly encouraged. So we know we got this hope. Every man that got this hope purifies himself. See, I got a hope for deliverance. I got a hope for, uh, for healing. I got this hope that God going to move for me. How many of y'all still got your hope? Do you still got your hope? See, what that's what the devil like to do. The devil will take away your hope. He'll take away your hope. So if he can get you to just saying, well, ain't nothing happening. If he can just get you to back up from faith, let go of faith, get out of that world and step out of him and start like murmuring and complaining. See, many people say, well, I hope I get this new job. I hope I get this new house. I hope that I get this promotion. I hope I get the move. See, we got that hope. But see, if the devil take away that, Guess what you're going to be doing? Ain't nothing happening. I guess I'm not going to get it. Now it comes that I am guess I'm not. I guess I'm not going to make it. Well, things went sour, so I guess I'm not going to get my promotion. I'm not going to get my house. See, if the devil can take away your hope, he know that can discourage you, get you to a place. Watch this. He says, verse 19 says, now we have this hope as an anchor for the soul. Now we got a hope as an anchor. One thing about when something is anchored, it's not going to be moved. When this thing is anchored, it's not going to be moved. One thing about it, when something is anchored in the ground, you can try to pull it up. You'd have to actually pull it up. How many of us have been uprooted from where we are? How many of us have been uprooted from the position that we're in? How many gave up because we couldn't take the condition and for the position? You couldn't take the whooping. You couldn't take the persecution. You couldn't take the lies, the allegations. You couldn't take the backbite. You couldn't take this stuff. You couldn't take the opposition in ministry. So when you were being conditioned for the position, that's what many of us, that's why many of us couldn't take it. See, when our back got up against the wall, see, we gave up and we threw in a towel and just said, you know what? I just want to give up right here. This is just too much. This is just too much opposition. Who am I speaking to on tonight? That you got that uh, uh, that that give up spirit, that quitting spirit. That I don't want to do it no more. My marriage is hard. I don't want to do it no more. The people giving me hell on my job. I don't want to do it no more. I, I want to give up on my children. I want to give up this Christian life. Like who am I talking to on tonight? That's easily been moved from this little small stuff. These small foxes. That's what I call it, the small foxes. Sister Nicole, he said, it's the small foxes that spoil the vine. So like I say, many of us, we got this, this quitting spirit. We give up on everything. Just give up. Lost your hope. You don't have a hope for ministry. You don't have a hope for your breakthrough. You don't have a hope for your degree or nothing like that. You just, you, you know what I mean? You just lost your hope. And see, that's why when the enemy come in, he try to take that hope. He know he stole something from you. He know he can get you to a place of depression. He know he can discourage you. And he know he can put doubt into you. One thing about faith. Faith, you're going to contend for a thing even when you don't see it. Faith is the evidence hoped for. And the evidence, the, uh, faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. So you're not going to be able to see it. See, you can't see faith. You can't see the wind, but you feel the wind. One, th one thing about your faith, the if you get this kind of faith in this hour, 
your faith is going to cause God to move past millions of people and come to you with a miracle with your name on it. I mean, if you really get this faith that I know with, with without God, nothing, I know with God, nothing is impossible. He said there's a two, two immutable things in which is impossible for God to lie. It's impossible for that man to lie. So if I know if this man spoke it, I know it's getting ready to come to pass. I don't care what it look like. I'm walking by faith, not by sight. See, that's why, see, that's why it's so easy for you to be moved because you're going by what it look like. You see the bills in the natural, so now you're discouraged. You say, well, I ain't never going to get caught up on these bills. Your rent always late. You're always facing eviction notices. You got trial after trial. Some of y'all, you come out of trials, then you enter into trials. So you got one thing after another. That alone will, will cause people to be moved because they can't take it. They can't take the pressure. Pressure produces power. Pressure is what's going to uh, produce your ministry. Who am I talking to on tonight? Get to a place that you say, I won't be moved. So watch this. He said, we have this hope as an anchor for the soul, firm and secure. Something that's firm and secure that ain't going to be moved. I don't care what it look like. I'm not going to be moved. I heard the lies. I know what I'm going through in the marriage. I see the turmoil. I see everything I'm going through in the natural. But one thing about it, I will not be moved. Despite of what it looks like, I'm going to walk by faith and not by sight. I'm going to hold on to faith. I'm going to contend for the faith that was once delivered unto the saints. I'm going to war with the prophecy that was spoken over my life. When this thing was surely spoken to me. I'm going to hold on. I'm going to war with this thing. I'm going to war until this thing come to pass. As a matter of fact, I'm going to pray my prophecy through. I'm going to pray myself through the trials. I'm going to pray myself through the tribulations. I'm going to still give God glory, still giving God a praise. I mean, despite of my back being up against the wall, I'm not going to be moved. I won't be moved. There are going to be times when you feel like moving because God is whooping you to a place. You don't want to pray, God will whoop you to pray. You don't want to go to church, God will whoop you to church. Who am I talking to on tonight? I'm in a place that we say, I won't be moved. I mean, in a place where we was operating in God, was in a room with God, planted in the church. So now we got moved because of opposition. We got moved because of petty stuff. People talking in church, lying on us, gossip, slander. So we got moved because of that, not knowing it was hope, God the whole time conditioning you for the position. One thing about it, I remember when I was at a place, well, I used to run from everything. I ran from everything. When things got hard, I would run. Relationships got hard, I would run. I would try to find like things to cope. I would try to run away from my situations. I, I was a really big runner. I ran from everything. I ran from love. I ran for my trials. And see, I, I want to do this message tonight about I won't be moved because I was at a place where everything moved me. Everything made me mad. Everything offended me. Every time somebody teached the word and preached the word, I thought they was throwing off on me. I had no conviction. I thought I was right. I was on that broad way of destruction. Do you understand? Couldn't nobody tell me nothing. I had so much pride, arrogance. And see, I, I mean, I, you, you could be in a place where everywhere everything seems right. I mean, you're conscious seared with a hot iron. I was at a place where I was moved from, from, from everything. I was moved because of everything. People was lying on me, couldn't take that. See, this is why I say I, I understand, like, when we go through trials and tribulations. But when you get God, you get rooted in God. When your soul get anchored in God, I mean firm and secure, you're not going to go nowhere. Because you're going to have this word that tells you that many shall be the afflictions of the righteous. But I shall deliver you out of them all. 
that weep and may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. Now, if we believe that word, many of us, we don't believe that word. Because if we really believe it, why is it easy for us to be moved? If we believe God, what would even God saying that take no thought of what you should eat or drink, that I'll take care of you and that I'll provide. If we knew that, that he says, seek me in my kingdom and after all this righteousness and all these things should be added unto you, then why we bucking over telephone disconnections and water bills and when we face an eviction notices and different things of that nature and what we go through, hell on our job, hell on our homes. If we really believe that we're why we been moved due to the trials that come our way. Why aren't we anchored, Brother Anthony? Why aren't we anchored? Why is it so easy for us to be uprooted and pulled and tossed to and fro? If we were really rooted in God, if we were really anchored. One thing about it, some of us said we got so much faith. We got so much faith. But one thing about it, a trial will come to let you know where you are in your faith. So you say you got faith and oh, I believe God. No matter what I go through, I believe God. Though you slay me, yet will I trust you. See, we got a we got a big talk. We got a big talk, but as soon as the trial come, we gotta stop everything. A lot of do a candlelight visual because you can't take the trial. Wanted everybody and their mama to pray for you, but you didn't want prayer before then. You can't come to a prayer meeting, you're not seeking God, but then you want everybody to pray for you. This is how I know some of us don't have faith like we profess. He said, they honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. Many of us are not in God. Stop lying because if you was in God, you wouldn't be buckling and moving like you're doing. You wouldn't be from church to church. You'll learn to sit and take something. You wouldn't be throwing the towel on your job. You wouldn't be snapping on people. You wouldn't be ready to leave your marriage if you were truly in God. Somebody that's really in God going to wait on instruction. Somebody that's in God going to obey the voice of God. That's going to obey the word. Half of us don't even abide in the word. We don't even do things according to the word. We do things according to the world and their system and this worldly knowledge they got. You going by what your unsaved sister told you about what you need to do and how you need to give them a piece of your mind and how you need to move forward and how you need to end your marriage. But see, what's wrong with us? Yeah, I'm going to hit somebody right where you're at. And I, like I said, I know people are going to get offended, but that's fine. That's right where I want you. That's right where I want you. What it is, we get people voice mixed up with God's voice. We take an outside counsel. That's why many of y'all boogers being moved every, 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 through every situation that come your way. You trying to hear God, you say you're a man of God, you're a woman of God, but you ain't got no fellowship with God. You're not in the word, you're not in the word, but then you take an outside counsel about what they what what they think you should do. Before you can go to God and seek God about a situation. But you asking everybody about what should I do and and what is the Lord saying? What is the Lord saying? You would know what God was saying if you was in God. You would know what God was saying if you was in his word. That's how I know many of us are being moved. We're not anchored. One thing about it, if your soul was anchored in the Lord, you're going to see God despite of the opposition. Even when God was whooping, whooping you into a place, you were still giving God glory, saying, God, I thank you for the trial. What, what many of us doing now, we murmur and complaining about a trial. We doing more talking than what we doing praying. Many of y'all got more faith in the, the negative than what you do the positive. So then you wonder why this negative stuff is manifesting. Because you got more faith in negative things coming to pass than what you got than good things. See, many of us, we, we messing ourselves up by our speech. We're, our, our speech is betraying us. That's another thing that's causing us to be moved. God, what I want you to do is, God, keep me anchored in this hour. Not just keep me anchored, but keep my soul anchored. One thing about when your soul is anchored, your soul ain't going to want nothing but God. See, I understand this flesh. This flesh want everything but the word of God. This flesh don't want to pray. This flesh don't want to seek God. 
See, one thing about when your soul of Bokose, when your soul is anchored in the Lord, you're going to want everything he wants. You're going to want the prayer life. You're going to want to read. You're going to want to fast. You're going to want to come to church. You're going to learn how to stay still. You're going to want that Holy Ghost. You're going to want that anointing. See, when your soul is anchored in God, you ain't going to be seeking out the material things. You're not just going to be worried about money is coming. You're not going to be seeking prophecy because you are a word. You got a word inside of you. You're going to seek the Holy Ghost. You ain't going to seek nothing else but that word, but that Bible. That's when your soul is anchored in the Lord. You're going to see God despite of what it looks like. You're going to see God despite of the breakups and the soul ties and everything you're going through in the natural. The hell in your home, hell in your job. You're going to see God despite of anything. That's when your soul is anchored, Sister Ashley. That's when your soul is anchored. God anchor my soul on my course. God anchor my soul in this season. Don't let me be moved. Sister Nicole, I don't want to be tossed to and fro by every trial. By every tribulation and everything I go through. I don't want to just be tossed to and fro, get to the place where I can't take nothing. Well, I already got things hit my mind. I'm going, I'm battling, I'm battling depression, battling suicide, battling health issues. We battle so many, I mean, so many things in the natural. And so somebody say, well, how can I get to a place where I stay rooted in God? You know how you get there? Get in his word. You get in his word, get in prayer, start seeking God consistently. The reason why some of us aren't seeing manifestations, because we're not consistently seeking God. I remember when I wasn't seeking, with, uh, with, I wasn't consistent with seeking God. I lived that Sunday to Sunday salvation. So I was, I, I wonder why I wasn't growing spiritually. Why I wasn't going nowhere because I wasn't rooted in him. I didn't get a made up mind, a fixed up heart. But when your soul becomes anchored, Sister Mary, when you get anchored in the Lord, when your soul get anchored, that's when you fully seek him. When you don't want nothing but him. You don't want nothing but the voice of God. You don't want nothing more than to be in his presence. Do you understand? That's when your soul get anchored. Now, one thing about it, you have to understand your soul got saved, but your flesh didn't get saved. Your flesh going to want everything. Your flesh going to want the alcohol, the marijuana, the pills. Your flesh is going to want everything, but your soul wants the Lord. So watch this. First Corinthians 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse number 58. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse number 58. He says, Therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, stand firm. He was saying, stand firm. Let nothing move you. Always give yourselves fully to the work of the Lord, because you know that your laboring is not in vain. He was saying, uh, remain steadfast and unmovable. When he said stand, uh, stand firm. That's what he meant. Let nothing move you. I don't care about what it look like Sister Nicole. We got to remain steadfast and unmovable. That's something that can't be moved. We have to get anchored in the Lord in this hour. I mean despite of the opposition. Despite of what it looks like. Despite of the hell all around us. Despite of the confusion. We have to get anchored in the Lord God. I will not be moved. I won't be moved. Despite of what it looks like, I'm going to still walk by faith. I won't be moved. Decree and declare that over yourself in this year. That I will stand firm. That I won't look to the left and to the right. That God, I'm going to stay focused on you, who is the author and the finisher of my faith. I'm going to press through the difficulties. I'm going to forget those with things which are behind. I'm going to press forward to the mark of the high calling. I won't be moved in this season. God, I'm still going to give you glory. God, I'm going to still keep my prayer life. I'm going to still give you praise. I won't be moved. Many of us are in difficult seasons. 
Some of you are in difficult seasons right now, but I'm telling you, the seasons is will change. Don't move. Do not move. God is conditioning you for the position. Many of you can't take it. You don't understand. Like, God, what are you doing in my life? God got you on a potter's wheel, beloved. God is making you. God is molding many of us. We don't understand process. We don't understand why God got to take us through. You don't understand why why it's like a, a why you're on the same mountain 12, 12 to 15 years still roaming. Everybody who wanders is not lost. You don't understand the turmoil, the pain. Why the mind by mind battles coming up. Now you had got you got free. Now you sick. Now you depressed. Dealing with, dealing with all kinds of hell, not marital issues. One thing about it, get in God and say, God, don't let me be moved. I won't be moved. I will stay anchored. Despite of what it looks like, Lord, keep my soul anchored. Because if you anchor my soul, I know I'm going to want everything you want. He said, a bless are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. For they shall be filled. When your soul get anchored, you're going to want that anointing. You're going to want to hear the voice of God. You're going to want your prayer closet. You're going to want everything of the spiritual. See, many of us, we're not worried about the natural. We're not worried about the natural. We got bills paid and we, we get by. We got food in the refrigerator. God is taking care of things in the natural. But many of us just need a spiritual breakthrough. You just need your prayer life back. You just need your dedication back, your hunger back, your thirst back. Somebody, you need your zeal back for ministry. You need your zeal to operate. You don't even operate like you used to. The truth be told, you're not in that same realm like you used to because you let stuff move you. Maybe you let the sex move you. You let the alcohol move you. You let your friends move you. What are you allowing to move you out of position? Many of us being talked out of position. It's, it's easy for some of us to be moved because we let people talk us out of position. Getting people's voice mixed up with God's voice. You can't hear people ain't God at the same time. Sometimes you got to get to a place and say, God, I want to hear you. God, speak to me. Sometimes you got to ask God to sift your spirit, man. Because all that foolishness, foolishness you've been listening to, you got all this stuff in your spirit. And now you call yourself trying to hear from God. Yeah, you're a prophetess indeed. But see, you, you're receiving everything, receiving outside counsel. Receiving everything that's not like God. You got unsaved family members here, unsaved friends here. Then you wonder why you're having the trouble hearing from God. You wonder why it's hard for you to get a breakthrough in the spirit. Because you're being moved. I'm trying to help somebody. I'm trying to help somebody because like I said, I don't have money is coming for you and that you're going to get a check in the mail. Many of us are dealing with real life stuff, trials and tribulations. And the reason why some of us have been unanchored. Dealing with things in the church. Can't take nothing in the church. Feel like we're not growing spiritually. Feel like we ain't moving forward. Feel like feel like we're at the same level. There's a lot of things that's moving us. But did God tell you to move? Did God tell you to move? Did God tell you to start that ministry? Did God tell you to go from church to church? Guess one thing. A plant can't grow if it's being moved. You know, if you take a plant and you take it out of the pot and you keep moving a plant, a plant and then you replant it again, that can kill a plant. So if you keep uprooting yourself, how can something grow? When you keep uprooting yourself, you say, well, it's not, I'm not growing where I'm at. Let the water keep coming. Let the water keep going. Let the water keep coming so you can grow. One thing about it, when a plant gets watered, it grows. Whether it be a little, a little bit here, here, a little bit there, here, there, uh, here a little, there a little. One thing about it, God gonna give the increase. God gonna move for you. God may have you there to shift the ministry. 
God may have you there to bring the anointing. He said, well, I don't feel nothing. I ain't growing and ain't no power. God might got you there to bring the anointing. God don't have you certain places for no reason. You just ain't find that church for no reason. Like I said, I understand why we, we go through certain things. And I understand trials and tribulations come. But you say, God, give me a heart to give me a heart to proceed. Give me a heart to listen. Take away the stony heart and let my soul stay anchored in this hour. I won't be moved. Begin to decree and declare that over yourself. How many of y'all are doing that right now? Say, I won't be moved. I won't be moved despite of what it looks like. I know it looks rough, but if you're going by what it looks like, you're going to get discouraged. I've been there. I went by what it looks like and I got discouraged. Not even knowing the outcome. This is why you say, God, give me eyes to see what you're getting ready to do. Because God, I ain't going to lie in the natural. I feel like giving up. God, this thing look hard. God, this thing look rough. But God, guess what? I'm, I'm going to trust you now. Though, that's of those who got their soul anchored and say, God, despite of what it looks like, I'm going to walk by faith and not by sight. Now, listen, God, listen, I don't, it don't look good now. It doesn't look good. But I'm going to walk by faith and not by sight. It's about having faith. He said, if you speak to this mountain, this thing shall be removed. That's going to happen in this year. You're going to have faith to speak the mountains in your life. You're going to have faith to move some things out of the way. You're going to have faith to break these spiritual blockages, mm -hmm. break these chains in your life. Like I said, some of you are getting a whole nother faith. Jude caught the revelation where he said, build up your most holy faith by praying in the Holy Ghost. You want to get another faith? Pray. Speak to these mountains. Speak to these situations in your life. But most of all, beloved, don't be moved. Decree and declare, I won't be moved. That I'm going to get everything that God has for me. I'm going to get my peace back. I'm going to get my joy back. I'm going to get my family back. I'm going to get my children back. I'm going to get my husband back. Everything that the enemy stole from me is coming back. Everything that I lost is coming back. God getting ready to restore a hundredfold. Receive it on tonight. Receive it on tonight. I'm talking about a full restoration. A full restoration of the natural and the spiritual. You're not going to have to be a, a reminiscent on what you used to have. Reminiscent on the blessing that you used to have. Remember we used to sit back and reminisce and say, well, I remember when I used to have it. I remember when I had that job. Guess what? God bringing that back. God got something in store for you. Somebody might got you on a wheel. Somebody might be getting ready to leave you everything. You understand? I'm going to share something with you. Um, I had got a call last night from my aunt. Uh, one of my aunts. And um, she uh she called me and, and what what was so and this is so prophetic. This is so prophetic. And I, I had a dream like two nights ago and I, I texted her, I said, Listen, I had a dream that you were giving me things. I had a dream that you were giving me things. And um she was like, Yeah, I saw that message. She was like, That's very interesting. She was like, But matter of fact, I wanted to talk to you about something. Because I, I really wanted uh, to come to you this, and I, I just want to tell you how how proud of, uh, proud of you I am, and how the the man that you've become, and what you've grown to be. And she's like, I just pray uh, that you know God keeps you on the right path, and you stay where you need to be. And she said, like, what I want to do is, she says, I want to uh, sign you over as a beneficiary. So if I leave, you get everything. You know what I mean? That you, you get everything, no matter what it is, you get everything. And she's just crying and telling me how, you know, I just, I'm just so proud of you and that just everything you become. And she was like, listen, I want to sign you over, um, to, to get everything, you know, as a beneficiary to everything. And she's like, you, you have the car, the, the home, the, she said everything. She's like, I just want to, she's like, I want to sign this stuff, um, she said, I want to sign this over to you. And she said, I just got to get your information. She was like, the money, the everything, everything that's left over after the services. She said, I want you to have it. I want you to have everything. 
She was like, so there'll be, there'll be some money. Uh, there'll be some things, you know, left over for you, like the car, everything. She says, uh, I just want you to have it all. She was like, if I was to go. So like, and what was so crazy about it? I saw it before that. I saw it before that, before she even said something to me. And uh, she was just crying and telling me, you know, like, you never gave me a reason to not trust you. And you, you know, you, you've you always showed love to me. And, you all, you know, it's like you never know what, what God going to do for you, for being faithful and for being there. And she was like, you've helped me so much, uh, more than what you know, um, through these past couple of years, just by what God did in your life. She said, you've said things that just encouraged me, you know, prophetic things that just hit her right where she was. And she was just crying and telling me, thank you so much. I just, she's like, I want to be able to give something back to you someday. And like I said, that, that's nobody but the Lord. And I'm not boasting on me. I'm boasting in God. I was saying, you know, somebody might have you in a will. You don't never know that. Somebody might have something laid up for you. Um, just trust God, you know, despite of what he's doing in your life. Uh, even when you feel like you're not reaching people. Uh, one thing about it, you inspire people that pretend to not even see you. You inspire people that pretend to not even see you. There's somebody pulling on this word. You may not even see them here. It may be on YouTube, Facebook. It's somebody that's getting his word. And like, I just thank God for what he's getting ready to do in my life and yours. And like I said, beloved, you have, you have to know you're not going to be able to save everybody. Sometimes you got to save yourself. And, and what I know for sure is it's hard to pull people out of water when you yourself are standing in quicksand. When you're standing in quicksand, it's hard to pull somebody out of water. When you're getting ready to sink, sometimes you got to save yourself. So I know that's for somebody and, you know, I'm not going to question it, you know, but I know that every, everything I said tonight is not in vain. Beloved, decree and declare over yourself that I won't be moved in Jesus name. Amen. God bless you all. And like I said, I really enjoy doing this teaching about not being moved. Because I'm, when I tell y'all, many of us, we just been moved from all kinds of stuff. Small foxes. He said, if you can't run with the footsman, what you going to do when the horseman come? We've been moved from false, like small stuff. Telephone disconnection and people rolling their eyes at you. Talking about you behind your back. And we taking it and crying and buckling over subliminals on Facebook and how oh, I know they posted about me and this and that and buckling and giving up no people that's rooted got their soul anchored they not going to be moved it's not going to be easy for them to give up due to allegations it's not going to be easy for them to throw in a towel on ministry and say I don't want it and give up on your calling after all the people that's been eating from your tree don't you know if you go down you take other people down with you your fall is going to discourage others. That's why I'm saying I I can't I can't go back. I can't I can't go I can't throw on a towel because of the people that's pulling on me. The people that's eating from my tree. Your fall will discourage people. Preacher, teacher, reacher, prophet, prophetess, whoever you are. Don't be moved. Stay right there. That's what God told me. Stay right there. Stay right. I want you to stay right where you at. Don't be moved. Don't be moved. But I'm release a prayer. Father, we thank you on tonight. Just for your word. Just for your revelation. Just for your spoken word. We thank you for the simplicity of the gospel. God, move for Mary Hendricks on tonight. Move for Nicole, Mary. All the faithful viewers that are on every spiritual daughter, every spiritual son. God, I ask you to move not by power nor by might, but by your spirit on tonight. God, send total restoration. God, break everything that's not like you. Lord, uproot these familiar spirits in the name of Jesus. Lord, I ask you to touch our minds on tonight. Send a manifestation in the natural and the spiritual. God, increase us in the glory. God, move in this hour. Lord, touch our minds in this hour. Lord, perfect that which concerned my core saying. 
perfect that which concerneth us in this season. Lord, we thank you, Lord. Break every chain and break every yoke on tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. I just want to encourage you on tonight. If you uh, need my information, it's all on the profile. If you want to email me, you can also email me at prophettravismiller at gmail.com. And you can also give into my PayPal at prophettravis33 at PayPal me. Amen. God bless you. Love you so much. Keep my son lifted up in prayer. Amen. I pray for him as well. Sister Yolanda, and go back and watch the replay about I won't be moved. Amen. Anybody have any questions on tonight? Any questions? Thank you for coming on. We'll be back on tomorrow. I, I believe God's going to speak some things. And we're going to talk about living by faith uh, on uh, tomorrow. I believe it's going to be an awesome, awesome teaching about living by faith. Amen. So God bless you all. Thank you all for being on tonight. Mother Midnight Cry, I love you so much. Be back on tomorrow night. Be blessed.